but but another one that you were involved with that's had a lot of a complete uh, was a one eighty uh, on the critical critical reaction is Judge Dredd. Like well, people love that one, though. Uh, no, uh, well, Judge Dredd, Judge Dredd was a str- very strange bird. What's funny about that is I was a fan of the comic book when it was unknown in the United States, and I actually tried to get the guy who produced the movie to make that movie like in the 80s, and he said nobody knows this comic book. Uh, the, on Judge Dredd, the problem we had there is that um, the director, we had, we had a British director uh, who um, would always defend whatever he wanted to do as something from the comic book. So that script had been in development for about 12 years for many, many, many scripts. And I had developed a reputation as kind of a story doctor. I get brought in on pictures that are in trouble and to like fix the script. And sometimes I've even been a story um, uh, first responder, a movie first responder. The movie's finished. They had a test screening. The audience walked out and I've been brought in on finished movies to like fix them and do reshoots and stuff. Nowadays on social media, there's always this gossip Whenever that, whenever that happens, uh, the uh, uh, the social media is all over it. Uh oh, they're doing reshoots on this movie. They must be in trouble. Um, my experiences with this were like ten years ago or longer, so it sort of didn't get the the gossip uh, that you would. But I did that a lot. Um, so um, I came on this picture when they knew they wanted to make it, and they said we have several scripts that had problems. Can you reconcile these scripts? Take the best from you know. So uh, I'm doing a rewrite and pulling it together. And right away, I see all these, like, things that are very, like, confusing. So at the first meeting I had with all the executives and the directors there, I go, my, I, my first question here is, I'll put this in terms for the Americans, I said in the room, why is Perry White the bad guy? I mean, what do you mean? Now, Perry White, you know, is the, the editor of the Daily Planet. He's Lois Lane and Clark Kent's boss. Mm. He's a, a mentor figure. He's like... Um, He's like um, uh, Nick Fury in the Avengers movies. You know, he's the boss. So I go, why is he the bad guy? And so not a single person in the room knew that uh, that, that character that Jürgen Pruck now plays is a regular, ongoing mentor character to Judge Dredd. So that all the heads in the room turn around and look at the director. And he goes, uh, oh, I thought it was kind of a lock, you know. You kind of shock the audience. It felt man they trusted all these years is the bad. I, I said, but this one they've never trusted him. They don't know who the hell he is. So they say, change him. So now he's because he, he had this. He had these. He wanted to do these like world changing things. So another thing I come to in the script is the prison. Now, if you know the comic book, if you know two thousand A.D., the prison is on Titan, a moon of Saturn. Mm. So I says, why is okay? Why is the prison? Aspen, Colorado, when it's supposed to be in outer space. And there every head there every head turns around. And he goes, Oh, I thought it was kind of a lock, you know, Hollywood people they go skiing in Aspen and now in the future it's a prison. <laughs> and I go, but like but like like that why? Why would you you know, and there's fans of this comic book, you're pissing on two of the biggest things in the comic book. It's like saying super non it's your it's like you're saying Superman's you're saying Perry White's the bad guy and Lex Luthor's a good guy. And Superman is not from Grypton. He's from Argon uh, or Helium. I'm doing my noble <laughs> gas jokes. Uh, why are we, so fine. So they tell me, so they tell me as they rewrite the script, everything I bring up, this guy is done. Is that lightning? No, it's just the, the, the bulb flickered and it scared the shit out of me. Oh, oh you, you said there's a storm there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that way. All right. So in my script, I, 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 I undo all these bizarre little quirky things that that are, you know, changing the canon. I don't know why. So, um, nonetheless, when he got over to uh, the UK to start the movie, and remember, there's a tremendous time difference. He did a trick that other people have done who've been working in other time zones, is he didn't do any of this stuff. So, for example, uh, he gets over there and he calls, at this time, Caralco was uh, in financial troubles. In fact, they went bankrupt shortly thereafter. Uh, the uh, Cutthroat Island put, movie put them under. So he said, "Listen, I want to change the name of um, uh, of uh, the vil- of the judge who's a bad guy to to um, uh, I forget the name of the character in in the comic, but it's they already made the signage, and it will cost over fifty thousand dollars to change the name of 
um, Jurgen Prochnow's character. So they're in a panic in L.A. about the cost of the movie. All right, never mind. Now, if you see the movie, his name is on his little tag, like in the military. Yeah. You know, and it's on the door of his office. Those are the only two places you can see the guy's name. So $50,000 was a complete lie. Right? Uh, the uh, outer, the, uh, the, the, the prison, right? The prison exterior is, it's in a cliff. You cannot tell where that cliff is. That cliff could be on Earth, it could be on Mars, it could be on Pluto, but he again said it's going to be at least $50,000 to change the prison to, to outer space. He just make up all this stuff to put these ideas back, which were just pissing on the comic book. It was just, I don't understand it at all to this day. But the fact that, but in but addition to these two, there were a dozen other issues that, in his mind, I won. The, it's about the movie. We're all supposed to be on the same side of the movie, right? But there were a dozen other things that, that I said, and I prevailed. Just on storytelling. And this annoyed the guy so much that if you see the movie again, you'll see the drunk driver in the flying car. He put on his license name, D'Souza. Stallone says, well, Mr. D'Souza, I don't care who you know. This is your third violation. And he blows his car up. That was his, like, he, he went, that's where he got back at me. He made... Uh, uh, my character, uh, uh, the name. And uh, on top of it, uh, he um, on the set, he kept changing stuff. He actually tried to get writing credit on the movie for the for the things he did in the margins on the movie. Um, but the, uh, the, the upshot here was he did, gave so many interviews um, before the movie came out about how terrible the script was that he finally had to rewrite the whole thing himself that when the movie failed, he couldn't blame the script. So that was that thing, um, but uh, you know, I do not. I did not want Sly to take his helmet off. You know, I I, I didn't want to do that. That was, you know, they did that. I I, I liked. Uh, I also hated the Yukon. The first thing I said is I saw the sketches of the costume and I go, Are you kidding? You're doing like Batman with Adam West. You can't put the guy in like in in in, in pajamas in, in in a leotard. Uh, do what do what what uh, Tim Burton did in Batman. It should be body armor. Mm-hmm. And like, um, just yeah, the argument was, oh, the, the the fans they want it to look just like the comic book. I mean, the comic book costume makes zero sense. There's like, you know, there's like no armor except on your shoulders, and it's a big eagle. You know, it, it's it's. It, I did a movie that has a cult following now, called The Return of Captain Invincible, with uh, Christopher Lee and Alan Arkin. It's like pretty much like, um, um, it's like Hancock, but it was made like. You know, years ago, it was made 1982, and he has the, the eagles on his shoulder. And we did that as a joke, you know. Uh, so uh, the subsequent movie, just called Dread, uh, that had the costume right, in my opinion. Yeah. And he didn't take his helmet off in that movie, which was the way to go. 